Thank you, Thomas, and thank you for Nanopore to invite me to give this talk here. And uh, to correct, um, our company is called Kang Jianjing, and uh, we are actually a company based in Taiwan. And uh, we are the first uh, service provider, certified service provider for Nanopore. And besides uh, providing service for uh, research purpose, we also wanted to some, do some projects for clinical applications. And so we have our own uh, research um, development project going on. And then today, because of the time, I will just only share one, a little bit part of one project we are doing. And we call it uh, Passenger Real-Time Identification, Party Seek. And uh, we all know that uh, blood culture has been used for uh, microbial, m clinical microbiology detection for a long time, and it's still been a gold standard for this application. Um, however, worldwide, mm, um, no matter where, I think reportedly people are only getting around 20% of culture positivity uh, for this type of test. And uh, a lot of companies are introducing a molecular test upon uh, culture positivity. And uh, we've already seen a trend for those companies trying to bring the molecular um, assay part up towards uh, right upon the clinical blood draw uh, time point. And uh, uh, it's a no-brainer. When NGS came along, people already trying to uh, take the advantage of NGS to do a pan-pathogen detection in a single reaction. So you don't have to know what pathogen you are detecting. And uh, as early as 2015, you can see in this review paper, people, as soon as nanopore has been introduced, people already started to know to use this uh, Oxford Nanopore technology because of its fast and real-time feature of this technology compared to NGS. And, uh, but besides the sequencing part, there's also difficulties in the biological sample itself, and it, it comes from the biological samples. Uh, the challenge being that majority of the DNA will be coming from the host, from leukocyte in the blood sample. And your bacteria DNA and the gene, even the genome copy will be masked by the human DNA, uh, especially in the blood sample. So what we the approach, um, so this is what we usually see if you do a, a bloodstream infection. You will see... Um, you know, 0.00 some percent of uh, infectious agents, including bacteria or virus, in your final sequencing results. And you've been wasting a lot of sequencing cap capacity for human. And for, uh, there's different uh, technology to address this. And for uh, our company, we have a proprietary technology. It's using a membrane uh, technology, and this membrane is not uh, based on size exclusion. So it's a surface modification. So we can deplete the leukocyte very specifically up to 99.9%. .9%. And we test it uh, with uh, bacteria, and it can, the, most of the bacteria we tested actually can pass through over uh, 90%. And after this treatment, we can do a rapid uh, extraction and rapid uh, ONT sequencing to identify the pathogen. So the Mm, for example, the spiking experiment we did without a uh, filter, you're only detecting very few number of uh, bacteria. And after the filter, the bacteria can be enriched by our process, and the detection time can, can increase. And we also tested a few uh, uh, clinical samples. And the clinical samples show that you can actually apply our uh, workflow to uh, real clinical uh, blood samples and uh, detecting uh, bacteria way before they actually been, can be showed by other culture method. Uh, so this is my quick uh, summary of our results. Thank you.